Don Don Global presents the DG Recruit Podcast on everything headhunting and recruitment. Achieve the life and career you envision. What's up, game changers? It's your host, Don Don, founder of Don Don Global, the headhunting and career coaching company helping you achieve the life and career you envision. In today's DG Recruit episode, we'll cover how long you should stay. I got a question from someone uh, globally who's going through a bit of a problem at his existing recruitment firm. He feels that for a variety of reasons, he's not very happy with his current company. And he was wondering, since he's so new in the business, when is appropriate? How long do you think a junior headhunter should stay in a firm before considering another opportunity? And I think this is a really great question that a lot of people struggle with because the traditional advice is always, oh, stay at your current job for at least, you know, X amount of years, whether that number is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever amount of time that you should stay at a company. And so many people have this question, you know, when should I actually leave? When is the right time? And the answer is, you know, if you're earlier in your career, you have almost like very little risk to leaving. And let me explain to you why, especially if you're in your first recruitment job, you like the job so far, you've been doing decent, you've been reading my posts, you've been hearing about other firms that are better. You know, the longer you stay at a mediocre firm, the more time you're gonna waste point blank, right? Like if you're at a company where, you know, doing 300,000 is what your boss is doing and they feel that it's the most amazing number in the world, uh, then you're probably not in the right place to really make a killing in this business. Because if the top line performance of your leadership is at that level, it's very unlikely that they'll be able to teach you how to do better. Now, there are many firms that you can do very well at and earn six figures in your second or third to fourth year, at least in the business. There are those firms out there. Many firms out there are not going to be that person for you and not going to be that firm for you. And the reasons are are quite a few, right? The management sometimes isn't good enough. The training isn't there. The market strategy isn't there. The commission payout isn't there. Whatever reasons there are, you're worse off staying there longer than Cutting, you know, biting the bullet and joining the right firm earlier in life. And when you're just starting out in your career, you have an excuse. The excuse is that you just didn't know any better and you just didn't have any information going into it. That makes sense. And you get almost like two passes. Let's say you've been at an agency for six months. They were awful, never paid you a single cent. You know, they were doing some shady stuff. You left six months, got sucked into another really crappy recruitment role and you were there for another six months, fine, you can get away with two moves like that. Anything more than that, you gotta be very careful because firms are then gonna start catching on. You can't always have bad luck. You know, your tenure can't always be so short and sporadic and also there is somebody else at fault, right? There's only so many times you can play the blame game. You can blame play the blame game safely two to three times. Past that, you can no longer play the blame game because at that point, it's like, why aren't you doing better? Why aren't you figuring out a better way to do this? How come you have this ill luck of bumping into all the worst companies in the world? You know, that's odd as well. So soft stories, while they're acceptable, you know, you can't sob all the time. So it's got to stop somewhere. So two to three times, I think, is the most amount of times you can leave firms within a a one-year basis before being looked at as kind of a bad uh, hire. And in our business too, look, if you're going to constantly switch firms every two years, that's also not a great look. Um, Because why can't you just grow with the right firm? Why can't you just stay at one place and be there for, let's say, four to five years? You know, why are you moving every two years? That's also a little too frequent. So again, it's it's about how many times you do this jump and how frequent do you do it and how long are the breaks in between? Let's say you work for 20 years, you move every four years. That's less bad, right? And that makes sense. You know, four years is a good chunk of time. So four years, I think, is pretty safe the older you get. Um, The younger you are, you Again, you can leave as soon as, you know, really three months into the business because let's say in three months you did a deal and they never paid you and your boss is changing everything on you and your current manager and everybody left and whatnot, right? You, you can argue that. Those are reasons for why you, you need to leave. Um, but again, you can't do it all the time because there's only so many times you can play the blame game. 
I hope that answers your question. Um, but again, really, w you can leave at any point. Um, you know, it, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, over half a year. It doesn't have to be over one year. It just has to be, if you have a right justification, you can leave at any point. It just has to be the right justification. And again, you can't keep doing it. Now for more senior headhunters, the question of when can you leave, that's a little bit more complicated, right? Again, it could be early. It could be like, oh, hey, look, they sold me this thing and it's not what they told me. I want to leave. You can still do that. But again, the, what I said earlier still applies. If you're doing it every year, then that story is less credible. But let's say you've had a nice tenure. You've worked at a company for three years now. Is that the right time to move? Absolutely. You can absolutely, you can absolutely move within three years right three years is more than enough time in today's short-term environment right you can absolutely move to another company within three years you know any anything you know two years above even again in your earlier in, in, even in later in your career if you have the rest, right justification three to four years you're absolutely entitled to make a decision and make a move what's the most important is still going to be coming down to what you bring to the table what are your billing numbers what are your motivations for leaving you know at a certain point too it's got to make sense you can't just say oh I'm always willing to move always willing to um, take anything that doesn't make sense you got to be a little more choosy as you get more experience because not everything is just you sit in a room and you bill you actually have some more responsibilities like growing the PL per 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 perhaps maybe you know hiring and onboarding more and bigger teams maybe it's more strategic of a role maybe you're doing bd you know there's so many different things you get involved with that you have to think about quite a few factors before you really make that move so for senior people look you can make moves as as often again as you like but it has to make sense and you have to have at least accomplished something you can't leave a place if you leave it in shambles that's also not a great position to be in Lastly, what you could also do in terms of looking for options for yourself is to really maximize your existing manager and the existing opportunity you're already at. You know, unless you've really tried everything, you really shouldn't jump immediately to look outside because the easiest person to negotiate with if your management is good enough, if your manage if your setup is good enough, you know, you should also evaluate what is really there at your existing firm because you won't know whether or not they can help you if you don't articulate your needs so make your needs heard let your boss let your you know sort of uh, business and let your management know what you're going through and why it's not okay have an open dialogue be honest with them about why certain things are happening at your job and your concerns and see how they react first because that attitude will really tell you what you should do with that next step if they are amenable and if they are working with you and they're investing you and they're happy to make you happy then you're in a pretty good position you know sometimes it's the devil that you don't know that ends up hurting you more and that's why they say sometimes the grass isn't greener right so make sure you do your due diligence even with your existing firm don't think immediately oh someone else is gonna be better because you don't know that and you also might make a mistake if that is your assumption so again don't be looking at things with rose tinted glasses try to be neutral and try to do this diligently so no matter if you're senior or your junior evaluate what can be done with your existing setup always as the first step and then take it from there right at that point you can decide oh should I look outside what should I do who should I talk to you know at least fully engage in your existing employer to give them a chance to whether you're junior whether you're senior you've got to do a good job at your existing firm because if you don't and if you don't have good billing numbers if you don't have a good track record there's also not much that I can do to help you there's not much that my clients would find interesting right your narrative has to make sense and your track record also has to speak for itself so the ultimate goal for anybody in our industry is that you have to get good at what you do so your numbers need to go up you need to become very good at can at development, at relationship building, at obviously BD, at closing deals, as being resourceful, as looking out for the potential deal killers. You know, do all the good stuff that good headhunters do on a day to day basis. You know, you got to stick to the basics, stick to the foundation, and make sure that you're actually performing. Because if you don't perform, the story doesn't make sense no matter what, right? When you're younger, again, you're giving the benefit of the doubt. But as you progress in this career, you know, you can't be mediocre.
because being mediocre is not exciting to any company. You know, you might get opportunities at companies who accept mediocrity, and then you're dealing with the issues that come with that. Companies that accept mediocrity, they don't do very well during financial troubles and during, you know, this is this period of growth where there's more and more competitive firms popping up in every single industry. So everybody today needs to be aware of, you know, all the things you have to do to make sure you're staying on top of your game. My philosophy has always been this. If you are working, if you are going to work for somebody, if you are an employee, you better do a good job or else it will be hard for you to continue leading and staying ahead of your career trajectory. If you allow yourself to fall behind and if you prioritize other things like leisure, work-life balance and all this junk that does not work in our industry, all right, we're in sales. Work-life balance doesn't matter. We care about numbers. We care about billings. If you are very efficient and can maintain work-life balance, wonderful. But if I don't see the billing numbers, there's very little that anyone can do for you, including me, who's a recruiter for you guys. You know, I help all my candidates get through and get opportunities. There's very little I can do for you if you don't already bring to the table what clients want, which is the ability to really, truly bill. So no matter how old you are, how long you've been in our industry, no matter what, always have a positive attitude and continue trying your best to do your best at your current role because, again, you have to persevere. There's money to be made in any market. You can use resources like my podcast, like myself. You can ask me questions about how to do your job better. You can get mentorship from your existing Uh, company and your existing network but no matter what you're the one that has to make it happen so whether you're junior or you're senior you have to deliver you have to do a good job or else there's not much anyone can do for you when you are ready to take a look at the next stage and look at who which companies might be of interest to you the only way to stay fully safe is to be good at your job and to really truly be a market leader in your own business and your own career I hope DG Recruit is helping you understand the realities, challenges, and opportunities when it comes to headhunting and recruitment. Whether you're already a top biller or an aspiring headhunter, I'd love to get to know you. Sign up at DonnaGlobal.com to stay in touch on all aspects of career coaching and headhunting. Connect with me on LinkedIn. I'll see you there. Thanks for tuning in to DG Recruit. This has been a production of Donna Global.